Week 9 on NFL Primetime, featuring the return of Prime Time. Dion charged up, banged up, teeing up against the Falcons. Dan Marino returns to the slumping Dolphins for a huge game against the Bills. Elvis returns as the Niners starter. Could Jim Harbaugh return after this hit? Returning a favor, the Steelers sought revenge against the Jazz. Would Andre Risen return to form with Eric Zier at the helm? Will Barry Sanders net large returns against the Pack? You want to see why Jeff Blake is sitting? You want to see the turf wars? You want to see the big hits? Well then, stretch out, put on a smile, and do the dance. NFL primetime is not. Once again, everybody, I'm Chris Berman. Welcome to week nine of NFL primetime, a very Halloween-like Sunday in the National Football League. And to help me uh, light the jack-o'-lanterns will be Tom Jackson and the judge, Bill Pito. Plenty to tell you about. First, though, we should tell you we will keep you updated with the golf, a place that we all love so dearly, Kanapali in Maui. We'll keep you posted with that. Now, the late scores from around the league, the Miami Dolphins back in first place, tied the Buffalo Bills atop the AFC East along with the Colts. They beat the Bills 23-6. to That's a final. Detroit trying to put the finishing touches on a, a win over the Packers. Lions lead at 24-16 just over a minute to go in that game. The shocker of the day, maybe the season, the New Orleans Saints have defeated the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco 11-7. Brent Jones hurt. William Floyd hurt. Highlights of that coming up. A game that may never end. It's that good. Seattle and Arizona are tied at 14-all in the desert. John Freeze has thrown a touchdown pass to tie that game in the fourth corner for the Seahawks. And just seconds to go. Now it's a final. The uh, Houston Oilers at home have defeated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's a final, 19-7. to It has already been a great year for the expansion teams, and here we are only halfway through the 95 season. I mean, after all, look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is a team that... It, with one more win, they would win four for the year. No expansion team had ever done that their first year. They had won three straight division games, and today they tried to do the unthinkable at Three River Stadium. Sweep the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here we go. Why is Bill Cowher smiling? The team's lost four or five. I'll tell you why. Eric Pegram, seven, broke almost as many tackles. Look at him. One, two, three, four, five. He ran hard, Tom, and Jacksonville had trouble with him. Yeah, and the reason he was able to break so many tackles is that Jacksonville kept hitting him up high, staying up around his shoulders. He has a very low center of gravity. you got to get down around his legs. All right, and then Pegram fighting again into the end zone. Nice run, six yards, seven nothing Steelers. For the Steelers, the first touchdown, the last 11 times inside the 20. The red zone's been awful. But on this day, look at this. Five wide receivers and Cordell Stewart. His first snap as a quarterback takes the draw. The angular one picks up 15. On the play, Neil O'Donnell. Hey, Mark Malone used to be a wide receiver. Neil O'Donnell, a wide receiver, says, hey, hey, I took a corner with me. It was windy at Three Rivers. It was three wins. And Ernest Givens from Louisville. Fumbles the punt. Fred McAfee falls on it. First play after that, O'Donnell. Yancey Thigpen. Where's the tackling? There's the end zone. 14-0. Steelers. O'Donnell had only one touchdown pass in his previous three starts. Today was much better. Look at Thigpen over the top of Eddie Clark, 33 yards. Late in the first half, the Jaguars are frustrated. Look at this. Boom! Come on, Keith Gogatis. Give me a break. He kicks Justin Strelzik. He's out. Not bad for a field goal kicker. Not good for a regular player. O'Donnell to John L. Williams. Back after a month, this proud pro, the former Seahawk, catches O'Donnell's second touchdown pass of the day, 21 to nothing, and the Steelers headed all over him in yards. Now, Steeler hard-hitting football. First, Willie Williams knocks down the pass. Darren Perry nails Cedric Tillman. Then, Myron Bell makes the hit there. He's playing for Carnell Lake. Brentson Buckner. Charges into Brunel after the pocket collapses a little bit. And the Lion had a big game. Of course, you can tee off when you're ahead. Steelers haven't been ahead that much this year. Mark Brunel is such a fine runner, ran for about 50 yards. Scrambles. Watch what happens here. Gets hit by Cardinal Lake. He stands him up, and then Greg Lloyd. Greg, Greg, Greg. Yeah, and certainly Greg Lloyd, too good a play, ball player to do this. And if he keeps doing this kind of hitting, he's certainly going to be emptying his pockets to the lead. Nate Irvin, fine in the preseason. He's, he's a good player. He's a little excited. And 
Had a couple of hits like that on the day. I'm sure the league will be looking at it, but the Steelers will enjoy looking at their own game films as uh, they've done something they haven't done this far this year. They beat the Jaguars. Steelers 24 <laughs> and the Jags 7. And then Tommy, a different Steelers, and I think we got a, a feel for it both offensively and defensively. These are the Steelers that we thought we'd see all year. Well, credit Bill Cowher for going back to what the Steelers do best. That's running the football. Whoever's in the backfield today, it was Eric Pegram. And I think that offensive line was able to do a great job even without John Jackson in the lineup. And we can't say enough about John L. Williams he, when he gets back in that lineup, not only as a receiver, but as a blocker as well. Well, he's the guy in the backfield that they can count on. They yes. weren't sure Morris yes. replacing Foster, but... John L. Williams, and you saw the, the slide because he's such a great receiver, over 500 catches from a running back position, one of the best in the NFL. When we return, we have the Colts, C-O-L-T-S, in a spelling bee game against the J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 Jets. And the Panthers and Patriots, could the P-Men make it two in a row, one week? Guys, thank you very much. i got to say, I've, I've been in that water at 18 and played off the beach at 14. My home course at Kanapali. Well, we also would like to congratulate the Atlanta Braves and the Cleveland Indians. A marvelous World Series. Tommy Glavin and company, the old-time Braves. Way to get it done. And thanks for giving us an audience tonight. It was going to be a 7 o'clock start on the World Series, but now you can tune in to Pram Time thanks to the Braves. Other scores, we have a final now. Detroit has beaten Green Bay. That's a final at the Silverdome, 24-16. Chris Warren for Seattle was running into the end zone. But he fumbled and went in the end zone, and that score remains 14 all with four and a half to go in the desert. Plenty to come in NFL crap. Yeah. Eric Zier, the Z Man. Could he fire up the Cleveland Browns against the Bengals? And Dion returning to his house. Cowboys, Falcons in Hotland. With us now, Jets, Colts. It, this was not Super Bowl three. You know, no Joe Namath, but we did have Bubby Brister. Yes, yeah. same thing. A <laughs> little bit of a difference. <laughs> Indies win over the Jets in week two was a type that defines a season. Down 24-3 late in the third quarter, the Colts came back to win by three in overtime. Jim Harbaugh came off the bench to lead the Colts back. Now Harbaugh is the Colts starter. He's become the NFL's captain comeback and the league's highest rated quarterback. The Colts at home against the Jets for meeting number two between the two this year. And here we go. Second quarter tied at three. Harbaugh. To Sean Dawkins, Harbaugh only 9 out of 14, 87 yards in, in the entire ball game. But on the same drive, to Ken Dilger, 18 yards, Colts on the move, and Tommy, then they get some help. Yeah, Bobby, we're gonna, uh, Billy, we're going to take a look at a third down incompletion. It's a replay of it, the incompletion right there. Bobby Houston hits high on Harbaugh, personal foul call, and that drive would continue. And then on third and goal, Harbaugh rolling, rolling, rolling. Does he get in? Does he get in? He's in, touchdown, hurt a groin, would be in and out the rest of the way, but count the touchdown, 10-3 Colts. Second and goal now for the Jets, 10 seconds to go before halftime, and here we go. Bubby, picked off by Eugene Daniel. If they tackle him, the half's over. If he trips, the half is over. If they knock him out of bounds, the half is over. None of the above. He's gone. 97 yards, longest return for a touchdown in Colts history. 17-3 Colts at the half, Tommy. Yeah, and after Bubby Brister made this interception throw, obviously you see he's discouraged, but he has to make a better effort at the tackle than that. Third quarter, Harbaugh's out. Groin giving him trouble, so Erickson's in. Erickson is down. Hugh Douglas would get the sack, and Tommy Douglas wasn't through. Yeah, you watch Hugh Douglas at the bottom of the screen, and just watch him get this great push right there to Harbaugh. He has great strength, and once he gets his hands on the quarterback, he's going down. Harbaugh back out, Erickson back in. Mo Lewis, here comes Mo incoming. Jets already surpassing last season's sack total, as you see there. Fourth quarter, Colts up 17-3. Bubby. What's going to happen here? You never know. Rolling right, rolling right. Johnny Mitchell rolling over. Touchdown. Jets down seven now. Five minutes to go in the game. Jets still down seven. Brister back to pass to Brad Baxter. A BB to a BB. Bubby Brister to Brad Baxter. Down to the Colts 20. 2.30 to go. Fourth and eight. Brister to Morrell. Inside the Colts 10-yard line. First and goal situation. Jets down seven. It's getting tight. First and goal now. Morrell. Morrell, no gain. Remember, the Jets are down seven. Second and goal, Brister to Morrell. Not much of a gain. Third and goal, Brister. 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 Ah, uh, just a bit high to Brad Baxter. So, Jet timeout. Give us a timeout. Fourth and goal, 109 to go. Brister, ball game on the line. Rolling right, rolling right. Throws. Incomplete. Incomplete. Boomer to Bubby. Don't worry. I'll be in the lineup next week. Colts win 17 to 10. Colts have won 11 of their last 14 against the Jets. The Jets' Nick Lowry, a field goal. He becomes only the third player in league history to score 1,600 points. 
Chris, the Jets outgained the Colts 251 to 114, but because of that interception, mm. they lose the, the ball game. Well, the uh, yeah, the Colts are five and three now. They haven't been five and three as late in the season since 1977. That's the first time around for Ted March Broda. So it took a while, but they're getting it right. Good job by the Colts, and tough luck for the Jets. Well, back to the expansion teams. The way we started the show, Billy. Uh, Carolina had won two straight games. Going into this one against New England, no expansion team in their first year had ever won three in a row. If they could beat the Patriots Sunday afternoon at Foxborough, New England would be facing a serious tuna melt. Here we go from Foxborough, where it was windy. In the second quarter, Drew Bledsoe's pass. Usually in the wind, you like to play Frisbee, but Vincent Ultimate Brisbee wasn't quite ultimate. And it was a basic Glavin Martinez pitcher's duel. Three nothing Patriots at the half. Panthers even resort to uh, Vince Workman. My way back to you, babe. But it's incomplete to Mark Carrier. Pat O'Neill's had a rough uh, year. Here's his punt. Into the wind, side foot, directional punting. It's only 23 yards. Later on the drive, third and 11. The young rookie quarterback, Kerry Collins. Derek Gulliford. Block at him, split the defense, 33 yards, touchdown, P-Men, the new P-Men, Panthers 10 to 3. Yeah, and Kerry Collins shows unusual poise. You see Myron Guyton and Terry Ray come up into blitz position, then back off. Collins calls the audible, and the Patriots forget to call, cover Gulliford. So now, third and 10. Collins to Willie Green. He's the color of money. money. 33 yards. And Willie celebrating at the five. Won't do that. But it's 17-3. Carolina on my mind. Then Drew Bledsoe, could he come back? Splits the defense to Wilmore. 25 yards to the five. Third and goal. Curtis Martin at 100 yards rushing Monday night against Buffalo. Up, up, and away. It's the fifth dimension into the end zone. It's a 17-10 lead. After a fumble by Collins, second to goal for the Patriots. Bledsoe to look at that little nugget. Fumble! It's a fumble! Sam Mills strips it. Lamar Lathan falls on it. Yeah, not a great look at it from this angle, but... Megan had the ball, Sam Mills stuck it in, stripped it at, and the Carolina Panthers take over. Yeah, they took a long time to look at it, but it looked like the good call, fourth and seven, Bledsoe to Brisby for first down, the Patriots still trying to tie it. Martin, left, touchdown, 17 all, the kick the point after, don't go for two. Carolina comes back, third and nine, Collins to Willie Green. Color of money. 31 yards, sets up at the end of regulation, John Casey, it's... Doink! It's off the upright, and we go to overtime. Looked like it might have been deflected at the line. In overtime, Pat O'Neill. We showed you his adventures before. Another wobbler, 32 yards, and Gulliver does a good job. Goes straight up field with it. Excellent play, and that gives the Panthers a chance to pick up a first down or two. Center it for Casey, 29 yards. Good! And for the first time ever, an expansion team has won three in a row. Dom Capers and company have defeated the Patriots at Foxborough by the count of 20 to 17. They have a better record than the Patriots. And uh, of course, both the Panthers and Jacksonville now have a chance to keep going on. The expansion record for any wins during the first season uh, is three. Well, uh, Tommy, uh, you got to give the obviously the Panthers the nod for hanging with her and Collins a 300 yard day passing 309 Derek Moore 119 yards rushing added all up for Bill Parcells he's got to be scratching his head. well that was certainly one of the concerns of coach Parcells that last week they won a game 20 to 3 when they only put up 155 yards of total offense today they were able to put up more offense play a little bit better defense with this football team but when I talked to coach Parcells one of the things he said is that the old days when a good team could play badly and play a team that was supposedly quote unquote not as good as them and you could still win those days are now gone and we see both expansion teams I think taking that to heart yeah they've got better records than several of the regular teams you know the Jets back to that game could just eliminate that last minute the of last the first half they could yeah. play against the Panthers the shovel pass play against the Colts they'd be going to the playoffs well I, I think they have something to build on you look at that front seven with Mo Lewis and Marvin Washington Marvin Jones Hugh Douglas a very formidable front seven they played well this game was lost on one play at the end of the first half, and I think the question has to be asked, and, and Coach Kotite is the only one who can answer it, when will Glenn Foley get a chance to play? You have a guy who you say is not ready, I say you put him in in favor of the guy who is obviously not able. Well, Boomer may be ready to go next week, so we shall see, but obviously some head scratching now because the defense did play well. All right, we go inside the numbers, and uh, how well did the defense play? Well, the Jets only allowed 114 yards, their defense. The problem was the offense allowed 97 yards. Oops. And the Colts beat the Jets. As we continue in NFL Pratt. Rams and Eagles. The Fuller Rushman. 
He was all over the place. Much of the Rams' chagrin. And the Browns and Bengals, what a wild overtimer this one was in Cincinnati. Primetime, the Rams and Eagles, two teams that got started diff uh, certainly on different feet this year. The Rams in St. Louis with trick plays and everything off to a great start, but lately they've had their trouble. The Eagles started with trouble. They benched Randall Cunningham, and what's happened? The Eagles have won three in a row, all behind Rodney Pete at quarterback. They met at the vet. And here we go. Chris Miller and the Rams making their first visit to Philly since the 80s. No score first quarter. Eagles pressure. Mark Woodard gets the sack. Eagles pressure story all day long. Then, watch again. And the William Fuller, number 95, is in first. Andy Harmon does the cleanup. It's a sack. And Chris Miller had his hands full, Tom. Yeah, you take a look at the problems as Chris Miller looks down the field. And he will see every Rams receiver will take a look at the spot shadow on three of them. All covered. He has nowhere to go with the football. Meanwhile, for Rodney Pete, they said that Randall would be a, uh, a secret weapon today. He stayed on the sidelines, not so secret, but Pete to Calvin Williams, he was not a secret weapon. They know about him. Touchdown, 7 to nothing. Then in the second quarter, watch the trademark of Rich Brooks' Rams. They hike it to the up man on the punt. Not Lendetta. Todd Heat in the kitchen. Then laterals across to Toby Wright, who makes it right for the first down. What a fun team this is to watch. Next play. Uh, then they go back to regular plays, and that didn't work. It was William Fuller, one of his uh, pair of sacks, sacking Chris Miller, and it's 10 nothing Eagles at the half. Now, uh, most of the gardeners and groundskeepers use a garden hoe. At Philadelphia, they use a Phillips head screwdriver. It took 20 minutes to pick the field, but then another fake punt. Todd Kitchen, and look at the effort. Yeah, and the thing we love about this kid is he never quits on a play, and he has deceptive quickness. He is able to get around people and move the football downfield. He's been one of our favorite players this year, much of the chagrin of Ray Rhodes. Miller to Isaac Bruce is another one. What we like. Look at him rumbling, bumbling down to the 26 yard line. Tack on 15 for the late hit. Two plays later from the 12. Miller, Bruce, touchdown, and the lead is 10 9. Isaac Bruce for the fourth straight game, a 100 yard day. Did not get 150. He would have been the first ever to have four straight 150 yards. Now, do they go to tie it to make it 10 10? Look at this. It's the swinging gate. They're going for two points, but this trick play does not work. And so Jenkins, stu he's stuffed, and it's still a 10-9 game. Then down 13-9, it's a fumble. William Fuller knocks it loose. Kevin Johnson picks it up. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Touchdown. <sighs> we, oh, we scored, and the Eagles lead it 20-9. Eagles defense was great. Then Miller drops back. It's William Thomas who made the play on that extra point. Makes the interception. Eagles defense on the day. Six sacks. Now we didn't see it there, but the Eagles, uh, six sacks, two picks, two fumble recoveries, and they scored the six points. And Philadelphia wins it by the count of 20 to 9. And so the Philadelphia Eagles are 4 0 with Rodney Pete. Still to come on prime time. We got the Browns and Bengals. It was wild right down to the end. Some plays you haven't seen before. And. Cowboys and Falcons. You've seen Emmett Smith before. That's our uh, special Halloween, but the ghost to the post, I guess that is. Well, Cincinnati and Cleveland, Battle of Ohio, and it's renewed importance, certainly, because the winner would be at least have a share of first place at the AFC Central. Cincinnati made the move, benching David Klingler last year, starting Jeff Blake there at different ball club. Now, the Cleveland Browns have benched Vinny Testaverde this year, gone to Eric Zier, the rookie. Would they be a different ball club? You have the feeling today that for the rest of the century, you're watching Blake and Zier, round one. They're going to hook up about 10 or 12 times. You have that feeling, and so does Vinny. Blake and Cincinnati strike first. You know how Jeff Blake can throw it? It's a matter of physics. Tommy showed you on game day. Look at this long one-yard throw to Harold Green. It's a touchdown, but they missed the extra point. And you miss the extra point on the opening touchdown. It always comes back to haunt you, fitting on Halloween. Eric Zier, very Blake-like. It's out of the screen, Tom. <laughs> Into the hands of Andre Risen. Bad moon, 46 yards. Eric Come on, baby, light my Zire to Harold Bishop, but not a great pass. Yeah, as we take a look here, a second look at this, you're going to see Brian Kinchin down the middle of the field. Zire chooses to go to Bishop short, but he'll learn these reads as he stays on the football field. Well, the Browns do get a Stover field goal, and so David Shula's club and the Browns are tied at 9 all. Now, Blake to Darnay Scott. Look at him, almost split the defense. Hit 31 yards. Cincinnati's Blake goes to Carl Slim Pickens. 
and he's just going to outrun Pepper Johnson. Not, not a contest. 16-12 Bengals on the eight-yard play. Zaire and the Browns strike back. Watch him go to Andre Risen. When did they get him, by the way? I didn't we know he was in their lineup. We haven't even seen him all year, but we see him now. It's touchdown, and Andre has a little mustard to it. 1916 Brown. Next for the Natalie Clad, Bill Belichick. Tom Tupelo Honey punts it. Corey Sawyer. Oh, he fumbles. Johnny Thomas recovers for the Browns. David Shula doesn't believe it. Andre Risen. <laughs> Think he's having a good time? Two plays later, the former Brown, ex-Brown, now current Brown, Ernest Bynett, four yards. And Sawyer disconsolate on the bench. Biner over the 7,000-yard mark. Only six active players with that mark. Congratulations, Ernest. 26-16, Cleveland has the game in hand. When two minutes to go, Jeff Blake gets hit hard by Rob Burnett. David Klingler, oh my goodness, he's forced in action, so it looks bleak, down 10 for Cincinnati. But you never know, as Klingler finds Tony McGee across the middle. No one's touch him. Get up, get up, roll for five more. That sets up Doug Bats in the Pelfrey. Good. 26-19. Why kick a field goal, you say? Because of the minute four to go, we're going to try an onside kick. It's one hop and into the hands of number 37, Leonard Wheeler. How do they do it, Tom? Very unusual kick because Pelfrey made this ball bounce so high that no one, not one of the Browns, attacked the football. Bengals were able to get in and steal it. So Wheeler saves the day, keeps the Bengals alive. It's Klingler to Jeff Hill. Incomplete, but a flag on the play. Pass interference on Antonio Langham, who would get flagged on the next play. So the Bengals have the ball at the one. Both coaches look it on. There are eventually 19 seconds to go. Klingler lofts it. Pickens, touchdown. We're tied at 26. And we're going to overtime. Jeff Blake is warm. But Klingler was the hero. This pass is tipped by Carl Banks. The former Niner, Dana Hall, picks it off. Zaire and the Browns, another chance. Who do they give it to? The veteran, Ernest Biner. Biner makes a nice move. Cuts inside the 25, inside the 20. And he's out of bounds inside the 8-yard line. Biner with 74 yards rushing on the day. Blake could watch as Matt Stover, 28 yards, good! An amazing Cincinnati comeback is stymied by the Browns. Belichick and Shula say, boy, it's gonna keep our hearts moving here for the rest of the 90s. What a great game as the Browns beat the Bengals 29 to 26. Zaire, 26 of 46 for 310. Tommy, you got to love these Z quarterbacks. Zaire and Zorn <laughs> and Zeke Bertkowski and Zolak. I guess they knew what they were doing, didn't they, Cleveland, by starting him? Well, 300-plus uh, yards on the day, winning a game in, in overtime. I think he showed his poise. But when I talked with the Cleveland Browns this week, it was very surprising. I said, what do you expect different from Zaire that you're not getting from Vinny? They said we expect quicker reads, and we also expect him to read better to his third and fourth receiver. I think, Chris, the unusual thing about that is Vinny, nine years in the league, Zaire, three months in the league. Here's an amazing number, Tom. I, I, we think this is... We got it all here. The, 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 the most yards passing by a quarterback, rookie quarterback in his first start, Vinny Testaverde, 369 with Tampa. First game. Zaire with 310. Sure. This other note, we said this on game day. When, uh, when Blake started instead of Klingler, Carl Pickens became a different receiver last year for Cincy. The nine games that Blake started, Pickens caught 56 versus to uh, the six games that, uh, that Klingler started, Pickens was like a non-person. He only caught 15 passes. Now... Remember that, and Cleveland may be going with the same thing for Andre Risen because it is the first seven games with Vinny at quarterback. Risen caught 17 with one touchdown. Today, with Light My Zire, he caught seven for a buck 73 with a touchdown. If they get the same result, they'll be pretty darn happy. When we return, Cowboys, Dion, wide receiver. Does he make any big plays against his former mate, the Falcons? And the biggest series in the AFC in the 90s, Bills Dolphins renewed at Joe Robbie. Juan blocked a field goal with about two minutes to go. The Cards have uh, uh, won the toss. They have the ball 14-14, Cards and Seahawks, 17th overtime game this season. Well, the World Series in Atlanta on Saturday night. Deion Sanders coming in with the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday afternoon. For sports fans in hot Atlanta, almost a circuit overload. And before the game, they're out to see Dion. Dion getting his high 35 million, I guess, from, from Jerry Jones before the game. Remember a year ago? 
I got one thing to say. This is my house. <laughs> I built this, and this is my house. I don't care if I'm with the Falcons or not. This is my house, and this will always be my house. Now, let's continue. Well, they continue this year with Dion on his debut as a Dallas Cowboy. Oh, yes, he plays corner. Watching J.J. Burden and George threw away from Dion early, going to Terrence Mathis for 10 yards. Three plays later, George to Burt Emanuel on a first down. Larry Brown makes the stop. Then George rolling right, looks to Eric Metcalf, and surprise, he beats the defense 7-0 Atlanta. Late first, Falcons have the ball again. George to Emmanuel. Woo! Dion breaks it up with a where was he throwing it, Tom? Well, George put a lot of mustard on the football, but you have to wonder how he expected to throw this ball through Deion Sanders. If he had slowed it down, Deion would have gotten a pick. But the Falcons have surprised. They lead it 10-0 in the first. Dallas ball now mid-second quarter. Deion at wide receiver. They fake a reverse to him. The dump off to Emmett Smith. That's usually a good play. My goodness, he was actually touched on. on yeah, as we, play. as we take a look, you watch Emmett Smith and his ability to break tackles, continue to move down that football and fend off defenders. Here, going for another extra 10 yards after he's grabbed before he goes down. Then Emmett finally punches it in. He's like a little guy. It's a big bang. He does everything. It's 10 to 7. As Emmett, 167 yards on the day, puts him close to 1,000 for the season already. 14 10 at the half, Dallas. Aikman goes to Michael Irvin. 43 yards. So Emmett scored, Novacek had scored, and now Irvin has scored. Dallas hitting on all cylinders now, 21 10. Six straight games of 100 yards receiver for Michael Irvin. The record 1961 Oilers, Charlie Hennigan and Bill Groman. Aikman to Dion, opens it up. A six yard catch. His first catch is a cowboy. The Glanville or Elvis Gerback? No, it's just it's somebody who likes it. Aikman, deep to Dion. Tommy, he dies, just can't get it. Yeah, Dion doesn't make this catch, but you can see the threat it will present to teams that play the Cowboys in the future. With his kind of speed, he's going to be open a lot. A touchdown from Moose Johnson makes it 28-13. Dion covering Emmanuel, who aggravates a hamstring. He came back. Then George tries to hit him for a touchdown to get the Falcons close. He dropped it. Watch this on the sidelines. George is head coach June Jones. So a 10-0 lead turns into fire and brimstone on the sideline for Dion Smile. He's prime time. He's back. And Dallas has defeated the Falcons 28-13 as the Cowboys Express keeps rolling on. They're up to 7-1. Dion after the game. This still the house that you built? Yeah, none since the roof went in. I, I sold it. <laughs> God knows I wish I could have that back. Those are plays that I shouldn't make. I, mean, I know I dove at it and gave a valued effort, but those are plays I shouldn't make, and they will be made from here on. When we first walked out of the tunnel, you, you thought it was uh, Texas Stadium. It was unbelievable. We had more fans than the Falcons did. That's typical of, of the people in Atlanta, Mr. Justice said. But, I mean... <laughs> this was the first game. I could truly say I enjoyed just playing the game. I didn't worry about the end. He's not over, in, you know, three games away. I'm not saying, man, three games, I got to get ready for Dion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, the Cowboys have reason to smile. Deion Sanders, let's rate his impact, Tommy, first game. Well, I think the Sterling Sharp and Joe Theismann were right this morning when they said in the Atlanta set where they play four wides, he would be less of a factor than he would in a normal pro set with the two wide receivers, and you put him on the best guy. So I think in that sense he was uh, maybe a non-factor. Interesting, though, the Cowboys go back to the strength of their football team and what they do best. That offensive line is the best in the league. You put Emmitt Smith behind him, and this was when they were down 10-0. Later on, 167 yards later, they got a win. A fairly easy win over the Falcons. Well, they played half the games this season. They've won seven of eight of them. And look at, we go inside the numbers. Look at some of the numbers posted by their, well, not their two pro bowlers, two of them. Emmett has almost 1,000 yards, and Michael Irvin has over 900 yards. So the sky is the limit for these two and maybe the Cowboys themselves. When we return, we got plenty to show you, including... Lions trying to get back at the pack for their loss two weeks ago. They're opportunistic. The Niners, be a record-breaking day for Jerry Rice, but not a day he wants to remember against the Saints. The Bills and Dolphins renew acquaintances in Florida. Back to NFL primetime. There's no doubt that the Bills and the Dolphins have played the most important games in the AFC in the 90s. 
One thing the Bills always had going for them, they always beat Miami, at least recently, 15 of 18 and 8 of 9 at Joe Robbie Stadium, where today's game was. But they were without Andre Reid and Thurman Thomas, and Miami was with Dan Marino, back after a two-game absence, trying to snap the three-game losing streak. Marino to Blaney Pomeli, 26 yards out of the 31, helped set up a Stoyanovich field goal to anything Miami. But Marino, a little rusty for the five-man line. Ted Washington's played well at nose for the Bills, bust through, gets to Marino, and Marino ruled down on the play then. Bryce Pop dinged on Monday night, comes back, and a Pop and uh, Phil Hansen uh, sack Marino, Tommy, giving him pressure. Yeah, Bryce Pop lined up against the rookie Billy Milner, and we thought this might be a mismatch if Pop was healthy. Look at him fight with his hands, push Milner back, and get that sack on Marino. But the Buffalo offense struggling as well, and that you would think, with Andre Reid on the sideline and Thurman Thomas on the sideline, Jim Kelly, who do you go to if you're a wideout? Russell Copeland, well, J.B. Brown is there. Without Thurman Thomas, what do you do? Well, you're going to look for Derek Holmes, the rookie running back, seventh-round pick. But Marco Coleman is there with the play. And, of course, the Bills also without their head coach, Marv Levy, recovering from the surgery. And Elijah Pitts looking on. Fish get it together. Marino to Terry Kirby. Wide open. Kirby makes a big play of 31 yards. Then from the 20, the handoff to Bernie Parmalee. Parmalee finds the hole. It's wide open right side. Then toward the pylon, he makes the dive. It's a touchdown. 13-6 Miami. Dolphins defense. Hadn't had a pass rush lately, but Marco Coleman drags Jim Kelly down. He's down at the two, Tom. Yeah, this is a great play by Marco Coleman of driving through the double team, staying low, and then just reaching, reaching out and grabbing Kelly's legs for the sack. Early fourth quarter, knowing Buffalo's going to have trouble scoring. Marino tries to light it up. Here's Irving Fryer. The 15-yard uh, line to pick up a 17. Then from the 11. You saw Parmalee leap in. Watch Terry Kirby says, anything you can do, I can do better. Kirby leaps. Is into the end zone. 20 to 6 Miami. Don Shula fired up. End of a rough day for Jim Kelly. Brian Cox in pursuit of Jimbo. Can, uh, hits Kelly in the rib cage with his knee. Kelly would leave the game right now. The extent of the injury is unknown. But he finished with the pads off. Todd Collins played. Thomas out. Reed out. And all of a sudden, a two-game lead in the division. Gone. Bills, Miami, Colts, all five and three. Miami wins at 23 to six. Marino 20 of 35 for 232. Two weeks ago, the Packers beat the Lions after a big 20 to nothing lead at Lambeau Field. This is a Rasputin game for Wayne Fonts. He's two and five and on the ropes. Doesn't he always win these Rasputin games? First drive, Brett Favre pass, deflected off Chamura's hands. Willie Clay, 100 pounds of clay, picks it up, runs into the 28. Then a 28 yard drive. Boy, you like it when it's like that, Scott Mitchell. To a Herman Moore, touchdown, 7 at the Lions, just like that. Second Packer drive. Far, going for broke. But it's just a bad pass. Picked off by 200 pounds of clay. Two picks in the first <laughs> quarter. Far, another chance. Second a goal from the five. Robert Brooks is wide open. But Benny Blades just ticks it away at the final moment. And it forces the pack to settle for a field goal. Five, two picks in the first quarter, as we told you. Second quarter, Lions get a big play. And who else to make it than Herman's Moore? Mitchell hangs in. Moore, usually you see him go up for the ball, but this time he's gone. He could go all the way. 69 yards, 14 to 3, Detroit. Yeah, Herman Moore, great receiver here in a sprint. He gets a little help from his receiving mate, Brett Perriman, right there. As he peels off the last couple of blockers, Doug Evans taken out, he gets to the end zone. What a duo those two are. Favre now trying to come from behind a Robert Brooks. And guess what he can do? He could go all the way. 77 yards. And the Pack are in it. 14 to 10. But, oh yes, there's this Sanders guy who Green Bay often has done well against, but usually on the natural turf. In the dome, look at Barry Jitterbug for 37 yards on the draw, and he has passed Earl Campbell for 10th on the all-time running list. Scott then Mitchell to Moore. Yeah, Scott Mitchell will go to Moore again. And you see Craig Newsom just turned around late on the football. Moore in his height, he's going to grab most of those. That's in the first half, Tom. Three touchdowns, a buck 26. Far for oh, Nelly. Let me tell you about Keith Jackson. He's down to the 11-yard line. His first catch is a Packer, but then Nelly, he just can't hold on to it. And, oh, they have to settle for a field goal at 21-16. Then the 24-16, the big pass rush, Favre to Edgar Allan Poe Bennett. Quote the Packers, nevermore. Look at him go. 20-yard gain down to the 17. Next play, Bennett on the draw. Ran beautifully on this day, down to the 11. 
Then, Favre, hit though by Tracy Scroggins, it's loose. Chris Spielman falls on it. And so the Packers, this the, the first game, it was the Pack that had the big lead, held on. This game, it's Detroit that had the big lead that held on. Henry, I don't want to gloss over Barry Sanders, 167, already. 9,510 yards in his career. Already, he's 10th all-time on the rushing list, which is certainly something to write home about. Saints and the 49ers. Steve Young, dressed as the emergency quarterback on this day. But Elvis is alive. He's in the building in San Francisco. Would he be a teddy bear, a hound dog, or a star? Kerback in trouble, gets away on the first series, Tom. Runs for first down. Yeah, he must have been paying attention to Steve Young. Here you see the niftiness, getting out of the pocket, getting downfield, and at the very end here, tucking the ball away and getting down on the ground with the slide. Then, the field goal, though, attempt by Tony Zendejas and Ronaldo Turnbull for the Gutty Saints. Remember, they beat Miami a couple weeks ago. Blocks the field goal. Niners next position to Jerry Rice. And all the receptions that Rice has made, all the yards for Montana and Young, it would be Gerback who would have his hand in the history books. Brent Jones catches the ball over the middle of the drill by Wilford Tubbs. Sprain, right, medial, collateral ligament. And we'll have more on that in a moment. Doesn't look good. First play in the second quarter, Gerback touchdown. And hold home, the Niners lead the Saints 7-0. Not a problem. After all, they held the ball for almost every minute of the first quarter. But Tyrone Hughes, this is what he can do. Look at him run between the defenders and the punt return. Tommy Thompson, the punter, is no match for him. Look at him go. He could go all the way. Almost all the way. Settled for a chip low Miller field goal. It's a 7-3. Niner lead. Gerback to Rice. History, folks. James Lofton's career yardage mark of 14,004. Number one all-time in the NFL has surpassed Gerback to Rice. History. Early third quarter, Jim Everett says, you can take that history. I got Quinn early, 18 yards. Then Mario Bates, up the middle, Bates. Into the end zone, touchdown, Bates with a big day. And the Saints lead at 9-7. to seven. Extra point, though, what happens, Tom? Well, you're going to see the bad snap here, but Tommy Hodson takes the call. There's a, a call that every team has. They yell fire. Wesley Walls gets down the football field, gets open. Hodson delivers the football. And then a 28-yard field goal attempt by Low Miller is wide left. And, and well, they once had Morton Anderson here. Jim Moore can't believe it. Ten minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Gerback to Ted pops it. He's in a tight end for the injured Brent Jones. But it pops out of his hands into Rufus Porter's hand, the former Seahawk. On that play, William Floyd. Right leg crushed by teammate Steve Wallace inadvertently. He's hurt. More on that in a moment. Under eight minutes to go. The Saints in field goal range. But on fourth and one, Mario Bates upended by Gary Plummer. The Saints are stopped. Last gas for the Niners at 11-7. Gerback to Rice. But Jimmy Spencer for hire is there to knock the ball away. And the New Orleans Saints. They beat Miami, but they lose to Carolina. And they beat the 49ers. You explained it. Saints 11, 49ers 7. And to make matters worse, William Floyd and Brent Jones, this uh, according to early comments after the game from George Seifert, it looks like surgery from both. From what I hear, it looks like they may both be out for the season. Obviously, that's the early reports, but you're talking about the fullback and the tight end. Jerry Rice on a day that, well, he would love to savor, but he certainly cannot. Rice, number one all-time on the receiving yardage, passing Lofton, he had passed Largent, but this a day where the Niners fall to five and three, and a day that despite the injuries, you have to be shaking your heads, and they, they took a little too much for granted after last week, I guess. Well, remember the comment about good teams not playing well, and then I think go back to next week, remember how the 49ers won. Uh, two touchdowns by Kenny Norton Jr. off of interceptions, the reverse pass by John Taylor, the reverse touchdown by Jerry Rice. None of those things happened this week. The 49ers were dependent on Gerbach to carry the load, and I think he looked like a guy who was starting his second game. Well, that, that's exactly what it looked like on the Niners' uh, defeat, and a shocking defeat, certainly at the hands of the Saints. Well, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Billy, they've uh, had an interesting season for them. First place up to a couple of weeks ago, but could they roll on the road? First uh, game away from home for a while. Yeah, and in fact, Chris, going back to last year, Tampa Bay, 9-4 and four in its last 13. They're 5-3 and three coming in, but if they're going to get to the next level, have to win games like the one they had today at Houston. Let's take a look from the Astrodome. Kind of a scary situation with Halloween upcoming. Uh, the people at the Astrodome 
coming out, getting ready for the holiday. Houston at home against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay in contention in the NFC Central. And there are the costumes we're talking about. And yes, they were scary. Marion Butts would get the start. Four yards. Carried at one point six times in a row for another four yards. Then Chris Chandler finds Todd, no relation to Steve McNair. 18 yards. But the Bucks defense tightens Tommy. Yeah, Bucks defense all year has been the motto around here. Here you're going to see Demetrius DeBow stop Bucks right around the goal line. Then second and goal, Lonnie March pressures Chandler, forces him to throw the ball away. And then third and goal, you see Chandler back again. And John Lynch does a great job of breaking up the pass. As you see, the Bucks playing awfully good defense in the red zone. Second quarter now, 6 nothing. Bucks offense trying to get going. They're down six. Dilfer to Lawrence Dossie. 15 yards on the play. And then Dilfer under pressure. Gets out of trouble. And look at this. Trent Dilfer, 21 yards for a touchdown. His first career rushing TD. Tommy, what do you have? Well, you're going to see Dilfer here wait till the last second. He makes his reads. He tries to wait as long as he can. Gets down the football field. And then you see Jackie Harris with a nice block right there on Michael Barrow to get him an extra 15 yards to the end zone. Still second quarter at 7-6 bucks. Oilers have three chances inside the 10. Brad Culpepper incoming sacks Chandler for a nine-yard loss. Culpepper's third sack on the year. Oilers settle for what else? Al Del Greco, 42-yard field goal. He had four field goals in the game. Oilers up 9-7. Second half after a Dilfer interception. Marion Butts still in the National Football League, and Houston's glad to have him. Touchdown, Oilers up 16-7. And Houston goes on to win by the final score of 19-7. Dilfer, 10 of 23, 82 yards. Chandler for Houston, 19 to 29, 107 yards. Thomas didn't start, but picked up 89 yards on 23 carries. Chris, tough loss for Tampa Bay. Now, what do you have? I'll tell you what we have. We have a wild finish in the Cards Seahawks game in the desert. And we have game balls. Stick around. As they once sang, we'll tell you more. Primetime Players is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the way everyone can save on collect calls. It's easy. Just dial 1-800-COLLECT from any phone and save. My Primetime Player, one start, one 300-yard game, one heavy amount of composure, an overtime win. Eric, come on, baby, light my zire. Did it for the Browns. Billy? My prime my player is the Colts quarterback, Eugene Daniel. 97 yards for a touchdown with this interception, a team record. The key play in the Colts win of the Jets. Daniel is in his 12th year with the Colts. That's reason enough, Tommy, for a game ball. Yeah, my primetime player, the calm one with the Cowboys. Charles Haley in charge, seven tackles, two sacks. He had eight. He has a total of eight sacks on the season, and he was getting after it all day. We'll be back. Back. Everybody, Seahawks and the Cards, the game that would never end. Dave Craig used to play for Seattle. Now he's saying better you guys than me. First quarter, Seattle starter John Freeze in there for Meyer to Chris Warren, who fumbles. What else is new? That was the story in the first half. Seth Joyner recovers. Rick Meyer looking on, Cards capitalize. Craig hits the former Jet Rob Moore in the end zone. Eight yards and a touchdown at 7-0 Arizona. Still in the first, Meyer out onto the field. First pass in the game for Meyer, intercepted by Williams. He stepped right in front of Joey Galloway. It led to nothing. Seahawks get the ball back. Meyer's second pass, intercepted by Michael Bankston, and a developing situation. Because big number 63 is going to lose a football. McCant says, thank you very much. Right there, touchdown. Arizona up 14-0, uh, Tommy. This play almost seems commonplace in the game today as Meyer's pass hits Matt Joyce in the back. Bankston gets the ball, fumbles it inside the five-yard line. Keith McCants has the presence of mind to pick it up and run in the end zone just the way you draw it up. Meyer threw two passes. Both were picked off. Therefore, Meyer out of the mix. Back to free. Second quarter. Brian Blades. The catch. Popped by Williams. Oh. oh, his helmet popped off. You saw it. Second half. Seahawks get something going. Freeze to Max Strong. 17 yards and a touchdown. 14-7. Cards right now in the third quarter. Fourth quarter, third and one. Look at this. Lamar Smith takes the handoff. And look at this, the 40, the 30, the 20. He's at the 15, we can count backwards. The longest run in Seattle history, 68 yards. Then, freeze. The Max Strong, 
out of the backfield. And this actually is Warren. Warren with a chance here to go in with a game tied, and he fumbles a football. He fumbled a football, and Arizona picks it up. So in the fourth, Seahawks with a chance. 43 yards, Todd Peterson, it's blocked. Game is still tied at 14, three minutes left. Remember, the game would never end. Heading in overtime, Garrison Hurst off tackle. Cardinals in decent shape. Greg Davis in the cards, try for the game winner. Blocked! Remember, the game would never end. We're still tied at 14. Seahawks are driving. Would it end? Oh, I, I feel something coming, fellas. Freezes pass. Lorenzo Lynch! Remember, the Cards beat the Giants on an interception return for a touchdown, and now they beat the Seattle Seahawks. Lorenzo Lynch, 72 yards, and a touchdown. As Arizona goes on and win 2014. I should say the Cards lost the Giants on an interception return. This one, they win on an interception return. Cards win at 20 to 14. Seattle has lost four straight games. Only the Seahawks. Man, that was rough. Meanwhile, the 100-yard rushers, Emmett Smith leads the rushing parade, as does Barry Sanders. A couple of names we've seen on there before. Chris Warren it needed about 10 more to get in the end zone, and the Seabags might have won it. The other 100-yard rushers, Bennett, Moore, and Mario Bates for the Saints in their big upset. Elsewhere, 300-yard passers, Zire, Kerry Collins, two rookie quarterbacks, along with Brett Favre, in a loss. Our Sunday night football begins next Sunday night. It's a good one. The Dolphins and the Chargers from the Murph. That's at 8 Eastern next Sunday. Thanks for watching Primetime. For Tom Jackson and Bill Pito, I'm Chris Berman. What a wild, wild week going into Halloween. Trick or treat, everybody. Thanks for watching.